Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to all OPTC players across the planet, welcome to version 10.0 of One Piece Treasure Cruise Global. I'm your host, Asian Guy OPTC, and today, in this very special video collaboration with Bandai Namco Entertainment, I'll be taking you through the new player vs player game mode, Pirates Rumble. We'll begin with a showpiece match followed by an in-depth analysis of the game mode, so I hope you're all excited because we have something truly special lined up for our wonderful, wonderful audience today. For our showpiece match, for the first time ever, we have two heavyweight titans of the OPTC universe finally collide. Sitting comfortably at the pinnacle of all things One Piece Treasure Cruise, representing Team Good Great Perfect, hailing from down under, Australia, we have Toadski. And the humble challenger to this throne, representing Team Bellissimo, hailing from the middle of absolutely nowhere, the United Kingdom, we have Atsu. Let the battle commence. To begin with, we will see our contestants activating their team's Pirate Rumble passive abilities. These will give them bonus stats for their respective teams. Team Toadski has invested heavily into boosting attack speed as well as attack power meaning his normal attacks will go fast while packing a punch, whereas Team Atsu has invested into charge time to unleash his special attacks first with lower cooldowns. Who will take the crown? In a moment here I believe we will see a Frankie Cannon unleashed right here to deal 18% damage of all of Toadski's units there who were clumped up very nicely. We have Aokiji on Aokiji Violence as Team Atsu's Aokiji comes out on top which is going to be followed up by a 48% HP cut. Emperor's Pride from Whitebeard. Otama refuses to roll over a die as she heals up Team Toadski. Gil Tozoro coming through with Gone Inferno dealing 1200 fixed damage whittling them down. Kung Fu Luffy is about to have a say here dealing Three people, paralysis, and 2.5 times his attack. Team Atsu is reeling, but Magma World comes through for the incineration on Otama, as vice versa, Team Totsuki's Magma World for incineration on Gil Tozoro. We have Ice World coming through from Aokiji, which eliminates three of Team Totsuki. What can Arlong Crew do here? Can he bring it back for the clutch? Shark Assault will deal two hits of damage, which eliminates Whitebeard, but this is the end of the road for Team Totsuki as the championship crown goes to Team Atsu. Congratulations to Atsu, aka Asian Guy OPTC, the champion. Alrighty guys, esports commentator Atsu has left the building. I'm now back to my normal self. I hope you enjoyed that part of the video. However, in this segment of the video, we will be breaking down Pirate Rumble as a whole, looking at the gameplay, going into depth on the gameplay as well as team building, understanding and navigating the menus, taking a look at Gather Island, and last but not least, a very cheeky special for you guys watching this Asian guy OPTC video. I'll be highlighting and giving you a sneak preview onto which units are the best units to give you a head start on Pirate Rumble. So to enter this game mode, you want to go to Adventure and then at the very bottom of the Adventure menu, you will have the big glorious Pirate Rumble button. Once you click that, you will enter the new game mode. The very first thing you're going to be greeted with is Nami. Nami will take you through a tutorial, which I highly recommend you do pay attention to. Otherwise, you may get a little bit lost, but hopefully this video will cover all bases so you will not have any problems, even if you do blast through that tutorial. One of the very first things that Nami will have you do at the very beginning of tutorial is to go into single match and take on Alvida and Buggy's Alliance. This is going to be a very very easy battle for you guys and what this will do is unlock a thing called Gather Island. Now Gather Island will passively grant you a whole ton of resources and rewards that you can earn just by logging into the game and playing more Pirate Rumble. So to begin with, you want to take out all of these NPC bosses. I've not finished all of them yet. We've got the Navy HQ to go, Straw Hat Pirates, Big Mum Pirates, and White Bib Pirates as well. And once we complete that, we will have Gather Island fully, fully unlocked. But Gather Island will be unlocked immediately after you defeat Buggy and Alveda. And to access it, you can go from the home screen and then click in the bottom right corner. You can see the dugong there with the exclamation mark on Gather Island. Now, Gather Island, as I said, does have many, many, many delicious rewards so let's take a look at the gem tree or the rainbow fruit tree 
for example. So this rainbow fruit tree, if you go into the top right corner and tap on the info button, will tell you how many rainbow gems you can earn in X amount of time. So at level five, every 88 hours, I can gain one free rainbow gem just by playing. You don't have to play 88 hours, just 88 hours of the normal world clock passing by and you will gain one rainbow gem. At max level, at level 35, one rainbow gem every 20 hours. Every 20 hours, that is over 400 bonus gems per year. You love to see it. Now, outside of this, there are many other things you can do. You can go to the gilding mine or the guiding mine, apologies. And then on top of that, you have treasure hunters. You also have the fishing spot. And these you can activate once per day in the hopes of the dugongs gathering for you some useful resources or materials. Dugongs, you let me down here and they got me 20,000 belly. Here we will activate fishing spot once. What can they unlock for me today? They failed me again and they only got me these rewards here. However, this is because I have only got this island at level one if i level these islands up the chance of success increases the chance of super success increases and the chance of failure decreases as you guys can see in the center of your screen there we also have a free stamina refill we actually have two saved up already so i gain one stamina meat every 96 hours you have passive belly earned there you also have Rayleigh points or training points earned here you could increase your stamina cap here so for example if i level this up right here my stamina should go from 319 to upgrading dun 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 we now should have 320 stamina there. So very, very nice upgrade there. And we have already maxed out the Attack Candy Island. Now the Attack Candy Island means I can add an additional plus 100 attack to my already maximum plus 100. So my maximum cap now is plus 200 attack candy. And this can work for all three types of cotton candy attack, recovery and HP, meaning that the maximum candy you can have once you maximize all of these resource gather islands are plus 600 candies very 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 powerful if you can hit that cap let's go back into the pirate rumble menus moving on let's take a look at the rumble shop right there with the icon of the rumble shop you can see how many rumble tickets you currently own and to earn more tickets you need to win in pirate rumble or qualify for a certain bracket which i will show you later on rumble tickets can be used to purchase items from this rumble shop or to power up and level up areas in your gather island which i just showed you guys with the stamina level upgrade that we had there so you can also purchase special rare recruit tickets or mighty manuals rainbow gems and most important rumble scrolls this is what i personally recommend people spend their tickets on alongside gather island rumble scrolls will work similarly to how turtles work they are color coordinated so you want to feed red rumble scrolls to red characters or strength rumble scrolls to strength rumble characters etc etc and how this will work is these will power up the special abilities and also passive abilities of your rumble unit so do keep that in mind you want to have a head start by having good level ups on your characters my recommendation once again is to buy out all of these rumble scrolls with the rumble tickets you'll have they're very 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 cheap as you can see only 10 tickets to purchase some of them and 50 tickets for the silver ones and there is also a gold tier that you can earn from pirate rumble as well as normal game modes within one piece treasure cruise let's take a look at the power up menus now to power up your units for Pirate Rumble, head on over to the crew button and then tap the power up button here. Before we start any actual power ups, I want to show you guys the new very useful filter menu that you can directly find under your stamina bar. So first of all, tap the change order button, which is again underneath the stamina bar. And if you go to the sort menu and head on over to the very bottom, you can sort your Rumble characters with three new filters. Combat power, which will show your strongest units right at the top, so going in descending order to your weakest units you can sort by cost the maximum cost you can have in any one team for pirate rumble is 300 so this is also useful to see as you can see it alternates between 55 and the level or 55 being my most expensive units there are other units down here if we go all the way down you'll be able to see some 30 cost units there's 20 cost units there's even one cost units as well so utilizing all of this is going to be very important for team building which i'll explain later on and then the final one is boost effects currently there is no pirate rumble live because this is a test 
quest server and right now there are no boosted characters but when there are boosted characters it will sort it right at the top so all the boosted characters will be at the top of your box and they will be glowing as well let's put this back on favorite the second filter that i want to show you is on the filter side of things and then if you head on to the bottom you will see rumble styles all the other ones are associated to the main game and then this rumble style button here is sorted sorting out your pirate rumble characters so at the very bottom here if we select other for example all of the units that show up in other actually do not have any pirate rumble abilities so most of the time you actually want to turn this off these are characters that can be used in pirate rumble but they do not have any special abilities nor do they have any passive abilities so in other words they're going to be your filler units which again i will explain in the team building section of the video so let's turn that off and you can now see all the units with their icons that do have pirate rumble abilities and to go over this very quickly from left to right i'm going to highlight these one by one we have the sword icon which is going to be your offensive or attack units we have the shield icon which is going to be your defensive or your tank units we have the two stars here which are going to be your healer units and then we have i believe this is some sort of speaker but your buffer unit so these units will give buffs to your teams and then right beside that we have the sneaky looking sun here this is going to be your debuff unit i guess it's a virus maybe but that's going to be your debuff units so we're going to select all of these back on turn off other and then i'm going to set this to favorite and the units i'm going to show you that i'm going to power up here is going to be this pirate rumble ace as you guys can see here, the first thing we're going to be greeted with are Ace's normal stats for the normal game mode outside of Pirate Rumble. To see his Pirate Rumble stats, you want to tap the Rumble stats button at the top there just where I'm pointing. I'll, I'll have a box over it so you can see it more clearly, but tap the Rumble Stats button and you can see all of Ace's Pirate Rumble stats. You can see he has a cost of 35 at the top. We're going from top to bottom here. He's an attack style. He's level one out of a maximum of level 99. His combat power is 2,275 and you can see his HP, defense, attack, speed, and recovery. I'll explain what all of these stats mean later on in the team building section. And below that, you can see his name. You can see Rumble Special, Rumble Ability, his behavior pattern target priority and resistances once again i'll explain that in the team building section but if you want to go to power up your abilities right now you can also see that both his rumble special and rumble ability are only at level one out of ten and level one out of five respectively you want to go back and hit the status button and then you want to tap the big power up button on the left hand side of the screen then in this menu you want to click on rumble special and ability which is in between support effects and limit break so you tap that and it will take you very nicely very straightforwardly to to the menus where you have all your pirate rumble scrolls ready to be fed and as i said earlier guys you want to feed red flags or red scrolls strength scrolls into strength characters etc etc green or deck scrolls into green and dex characters and our ace here is a red character so let's feed one silver here i'm just going for a random number of scrolls here i'm going to feed those in very very nice and then that should give us some fair amount of EXP to take him up to, I'd say, if I had to guess around level 4 special, level 2 passive, something like that. So let's take a look. Rumble EXP has been gained. You can assign this Rumble EXP at the top here. It says 4,650. You can auto-assign it if you want, and the game will do it for you if you are feeling lazy. If you don't want the game to do that, you can just reset it as well. And even if you press it yourself, you can reset it all the way down to zero. You will not lose the EXP until you've actually associated or distributed all of it to either one of rumble special or rumble ability so let's go for one level there let's go for oh let's go for more levels in his rumble special there so as you guys can see here 4650 is actually a perfect amount to get level two rumble ability and level four rumble special specifically for this ace legend characters or six star sugo fest exclusive characters will take more exp to level up rumble exp so keep that in mind as well ace is only a 35 cost character there and now we can see that his abilities have indeed been powered up so let's go into the nitty gritty of the team building and what each of these stats mean what rumble specials and passives and target priorities etc etc mean so i will see you in a moment 
Okay guys, important section of the video, we have got team building, understanding team synergies and the strategy behind Pirate Rumble. As well as that, I'll be giving you a sneak preview as to which are the best units to be looking out for if you want to get a head start in Pirate Rumble. So let's begin by tapping the setup button and going into attack teams. Now first of all, if you are feeling very very lazy, while I do not recommend it, you can tap the auto edit button and what this will do will select random units from your box based on their combat power and try to fill out the 300 cost criteria as you guys can see here 54,778 total combat power and 290 of the maximum 300 cost has been used but in no universe will we see the straw hat pirates logically working together with blackbeard or the cp9 so let's move away from this select all reset that and i'm going to select the blackbeard here as a placeholder for now and what i want to show you guys first of all is the difference between stats behavioral patterns resistances etc etc so let's get into that at a glance, you can see that Cotton Candy here is making a very big difference because Blackbeard's HP and attack are significantly higher than Luffy Zoro's, who do not have any Cotton Candy on them. You can see Blackbeard has plus 400, and therefore he's coming in at a whopping 8,541 HP, a whopping 3,218 attack, and a relatively average 498 recovery, whereas Luffy Zoro are coming through with a modest 7,092 HP, a very solid 2,637 an attack and also 619 recovery you can see their combat powers one of them is highlighted in gold slash yellow which is luffy zoro's one and the reason why that is highlighted is because during certain periods of the month certain characters or certain classes or certain colors will have their pirate rumble stats boosted as you guys can see their free spirit class characters hp up level one is the rule set for pirate qualifier number one so let's take a look a further look at their further stats here defense and speed 170 and 146 respectively and we've also got 182 defense so they are tankier than blackbeard and 183 speed so are much faster than blackbeard as well so what does all this mean? What this means is while Luffy will deal a lot less damage than Blackbeard with their attacks, they will actually be able to have more attacks going in a smaller space of time. So within a span of 10 seconds, for example, Luffy Zoro might already be up to normal attack, normal attack and power attack. Whereas Blackbeard might still only be on one normal attack. So that is the relevance of speed. That's not an accurate representation, but that's just what I want to say. For example, if Blackbeard had 50 speed and then Luffy Zoro had 100 speed, Luffy Zoro would be two times faster. So they'll be two times further ahead in the behavioral pattern. The other thing worth noting is the special abilities, the rumble abilities, target priority and resistances. So let's begin with target priority. Target priority is very self-explanatory. Luffy Zoro are going to attack enemies which are closest to them. Resistance is what inbuilt resistances this unit has. So Luffy Zoro has a 50% chance to evade the action bind debuff. Action bind debuff means you can't do anything for a given amount of time. There are certain units like V1 Aokiji, version 1 Kuzan, the legend Kuzan, that can bind enemies for up to 5 seconds, meaning they can do absolutely nothing. Very, very strong unit. I highly do recommend using him. But we also have the most important parts of Pirate Rumble, the Rumble Specials and Rumble Abilities. So for this part, my recommendation is to actually look at units more like Blackbeard because Blackbeard has a very good Rumble Special. It has a very good Rumble ability in comparison to Luffy Zoro, who are not bad, but Luffy Zoro is actually a unit that focuses on normal attacks and your normal behavior pattern, whereas Blackbeard is a unit that focuses on his Rumble Special. So, Blackbeard's Rumble Special at level 10. All of this will make more sense once I showcase a slower in-game breakdown of the actual gameplay. But at level 10, he will target enemies within a medium range for times to his attack, which is very nice. He will then buff himself, target self, for attack up level 10 for 25 seconds, which is very good. There's 100 seconds in total for each battle. He will target himself up for a special charge time or cooldown speed up of level 3 for 25 seconds, meaning that this next charge time will not take 20 seconds, but rather 17 seconds instead. And then on top of that, level 5 rumble ability, if remaining HP is below 60%, his self special charge time speed up level 5 so that's a further 5 seconds off 
and an int type teammate HP up level 5 as well, meaning that all int units on his team are going to be a lot tankier at level 5 HP up, which is very, very nice. His behavior pattern, again, is the same as Luffy Zoro. Target priority is the same, and his resistance is more so a bonus. When his current HP is below 50%, he will heal 150 HP at an interval. However, that may have been quite confusing for you guys, so let's get into the gameplay so you guys can truly understand what all these units are really doing. And the team I'm going to showcase to you guys, Sneak Preview, is a super type Katakuri, super type Blackbeard, and a whole array of Int Units, because let me tell you what guys, Int Units are the best color to be running as soon as Pirate Rumble drops, that is a sneaky tip for you guys. Anyone who doesn't see this may be at a huge disadvantage if they don't know that. But let me tell you guys, this team is very, very powerful. Okay guys, for this part of the showcase, I am unfortunately going to have to attack Toadski again. Bully, humiliate, eliminate, and astronomically annihilate his team once again, and it's going to be even worse this time for him because this int team, let me tell you, very, very powerful. We're going to pay attention to the top half and the lower half of the screen as the buffs are about to activate here with glowing orbs in three, two, one. There you go. There are the glowing orbs. And then you can see all the buffs which have activated going from left to right for Blackbeard. He has 16 HP up. He has nine attack up. He has no recovery up, he has 8 defense up, and he has 10 speed up. On the left hand side of your screen, in fact, let me toggle this on and off. You want to activate this in menu for those of you who are going to be participating in Pirate Rumble. You go to options, and then in the left hand corner, you can select all these order or SP assist on and off. You want to toggle these both on so that you can see the order of priority of all your units, which is based on attack speed. So as you can see here, Carrot is going next, Pudding will go after that, and then Akainu, and then Luffy, etc, etc. This is all coordinated with attack speed. You can see the Blackbeard now has his special ready, but he's still further down the queue. He has to wait his turn. So that's what I meant earlier, is when he has a charge special maxed out, even if he has his charge special maxed out, it doesn't matter because he has to wait his turn, which is way behind all these other units which are faster than him. So he's going to get his turn off here after Katakuri, who deals 2,200 fixed damage to everyone. Blackbeard should come through here, annihilate, humiliate, and incinerate a bunch of units here. Oh, no, no, no. Team Toadski not looking promising here right now as more buffs are applied with that Blackbeard special. We have a Josu special. We have a 6 plus Doflamingo special still ready and waiting to come through here. 6 plus Dofi might just end the game here, which will be quite bad for Team Toadski. As we've got a Kung Fu Luffy special coming through as well, he paralyzes my units. Paralysis basically prevents normal attacks from happening, but does not prevent special attacks. 6 plus Dofi is going to target three enemies and call it a game over. But there you go. He gives a defense up buff as well there, which you can see highlighted at the bottom of the screen. There you go. I'm so sorry, Toadski, that I had to use you as an example. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the int team. Hopefully, the buffs and debuffs, the explanation made sense. If you do have any questions, please, please, please do leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be answering all the comments on this video to the best of my ability. And let's go over into the closing outro of the video because I know there's still some things I haven't covered there, which I'm going to briefly touch on at the end of the video. Otherwise, hopefully that was a good showcase and you did enjoy, and I will see you in the next part of the video. Alrighty guys, to round off the video, I have some bonus notes for you guys on the left hand side of the screen, the far left, you will see it in the box there as written text, as well as what I have to show for you guys on the main game screen here. And to conclude the video, I will have this juicy infographic, which you guys have all been waiting for, which will show you guys five different, very strong teams that you can start off PVP with to get yourselves an edge in Pirate Rumble. My own personal recommendations coming from the future. So, first things first, how many times can you play PvP or Pirate Rumble a day? The game will let you play it three times a day for free, and if you want to, you can refill this stamina PvP stamina in the same way that you refill your normal stamina by using one Rainbow Gem. My recommendation is to hold off on your Rainbow Gems until it is the Championship or the Exhibition Rounds, which I will explain in a moment. 
So what is exhibition and what is championship? Exhibition is essentially a loser's bracket and championship is essentially a winner's bracket. And to qualify for this, you have the first three weeks of every single month to qualify either via block A, block B or block C. You only need to qualify through one of these means rather than all three of them. And block A will be week one, block B will be week two and block C will be week three of every single month. And they will all have their own special rule sets giving you extra bonuses or extra boosts for certain classes in this case, Block A, which I showcased a little bit early in the video, has a free spirit class boost for HP. While there are no major differences between Block A, Block B and Block C, the rewards between Championship and Exhibition between the Winner's Bracket and the Loser's Bracket are like night and day. And to qualify for the Championship shouldn't be too difficult. I don't know the exact threshold on the Japanese server of One Piece Treasure Cruise. It's the top 7,000. I would expect on Global it would be somewhere around top 5,000 players in block A, block B and block C to qualify for a maximum of around 15,000 different players within the championship. So that's quite a big pool of players. The rewards, if we tap that button there, we take a look at championship. For example, rank one in championship will get 10,000 tickets, which is a lot for rumble tickets, 100 gems, two legend tickets and a whole array of pirate scrolls or PVP scrolls there that you can use as power up fodder. For rank one to rank 10 in the exhibition, it's significantly less tickets, significantly less gems, etc, etc, but still not that bad at all however what i will say are the lower rewards which is what's going to be important here we see up to rank 5000 and above rank 5001 probably indicates we're going to have around 10,000 to 15,000 players overall in the championship so i would assume to qualify you probably need to come around top 5000 you get 4500 rumble tickets just for qualifying in championship which is a lot in exhibition if you do just qualify into exhibition it's only a measly 500 1000 or 1500 so you do want to be eyeing up to your qualifications for championship the little tip i can give you guys for championship is the earlier you start in the qualifying bracket the better because more people will be active during that time and they will have to attack your defense team and the more wins your defense team can get the more points you will passively get without even having to gem for stamina in pvp it's very very nice qualification will also give you some bonus rewards as well if you do want to gem and climb higher up in the qualification brackets but as you guys can see that the rewards there are very very meager compared to what you can get in exhibition and championship challenge rewards are also there so you can see here use challenge permit and win 40 times huge use challenge permit and win 50 times so this is basically win 40 50 times 70 80 90 and 100 times however the higher end here use challenge permit to participate 80 90 and 100 times means you don't have to win all 100 games if you lose all 100 games you still participated in 100 games and you will still get these very very nice rewards these rewards carry over through essentially these challenges rather carry through throughout block a block b block c and also the losers and winners brackets exhibition and championship so you can do this passively over the course of the month because over the course of the month you will definitely if you play every single day with the given free challenge permits every single day you will have well over 100 participations as long as you play every single day so you don't need to gem to earn these rewards either which is very very nice now the other thing you want to keep your eye out for is grades so what are grades let's take a look at this help button here about grades so grades will be determined by your ranking placement in a championship or exhibition now if you want to get the maximum rewards you only need to achieve a certain grade once and you will permanently have that grade forever and i believe on the japanese server top 1000 is the highest grade that you can earn to unlock everything on gather island i would assume it's probably the same on the global server as well the upgrade limit for your gather island will be based on your highest grade that you have reached so if we tap on this info button here you can see the championship rank whoever comes first in the world will get that very nice fancy icon there but championship rank 1000 will have like this golden border one star and that will be the most that you will need to unlock things on gather island so if we take a look at the gem tree here and we go to the info button if we go to the bottom you can see what the required grade is top 1000 and then you will be able to unlock level 35 for whenever you have enough tickets to unlock all of these very very nice things so currently on this test server there is no championship or exhibition so i'm currently locked behind anything that has a grade i can't even achieve bronze one here but you can see bronze one silver one and then silver climbs up and then you get i think that's 
well, I guess iron, bronze, iron, silver, and then gold. And yes, so top 1000 is going to be the most that you'll ever need. And you only need to qualify for top 1000 once to unlock the very far stages of the gem tree or anything else on Gather Island. But what I will tell you now is that this is going to be a very long process. So there's absolutely no rush to qualify for the top 1000 right now. On Japan, I believe I've only qualified for the top 3000 and I've already gotten up to level 28 and I think I can unlock my way all the way up to around level 30 here, which is going to be very, very nice. At level 28, I gain a rainbow gem passively every 48 hours. So that is a good place to start. And my recommendation would be guys is to prioritize the rainbow gem tree as well as attack cotton candy. Maximum attack cotton candy is going to be very, very, very expensive. The candy islands are the most expensive because candy is such a game changer right now on both servers of the game. I'm losing my voice, so beg your pardon. But at level 25, which is the one I would say most people should be aiming for, while the, the ticket cost here is still relatively cheap, a maximum increase of plus 80 candy in all three is very, very nice. So my recommendation is to aim for level 28 gem tree and level 25 for the candy islands and then you can start looking at the other things that you would want to invest in for me personally i think i'm going to be investing into limit break island here next so the guiding mine because i'm always in need of limit break items so the last bonus notes I have for you guys here are related to typings. First of all, dual characters or double characters like Luffy Ace, Shanks Crew, Arlong Crew, Luchi Kaku, Bonclay and Ivankov, any and all of them will not have a specific typing. So for example, even though Arlong Crew has two strength typings, he will not be considered as a strength unit in Pirate Rumble, so keep that in mind when creating your teams. So for example, this new Akainu or Sakazuki that we have here will be boosting strength dex quick teammates, but even though, for example, Luffy Law is a dex and quick unit, they will not be boosted under his effects. Arlong Crew would not be boosted under his effects, etc, etc. But a lot of double characters are very strong class boosters, so keep that in mind as well. And the last thing that I want to add is that there is no type disadvantage or type advantage gained from, for example, using a strength unit against a dex enemy, there will be no color affinity advantage there. So do not worry about things like that. All of the stuff is written in the PVP abilities there. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the best boosts out there. So guys, we have made it to the end of the video. I hope you have been enjoying the video so far. And this is going to be one of the most important parts of the video. This is the global team's cheat sheet for PvP slash Pirate Rumble. You've got the main roster there, which are the units you're mainly looking to invest into if you are going to create any of these teams. And then you have potential replacements on the right hand side of this big box here. The one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually did six teams, guys. There's a little bit of a bonus. I said I would do five, but I've done six. Uh, just to indicate the numbers there. There's not a ranking order, although I would say the best team is right at the top there, which is going to be the int team. And then the rest in two, three, four, five, and six are in no particular order. All of these teams can pretty much beat each other, but I would say the int team very confidently is the strongest out there. The one with the super tight Blackbeard, the Pirate Rumble Jozu, the six plus Doflamingo Super Evolved. We have got the new Enel, which is going to be a rare recruit in the super tight banner that is going to be coming with the super type units such as Blackbeard, the Katakura, the snake man etc etc and we have also got super type katakuri in there this int team i did showcase briefly minus the anel i had putting in there instead of the anel you can use replacements like that was very very powerful and i will tell you right now this will obliterate almost any team it has a very strong balance but of course to get the most out of this team you are going to need all of these units essentially maxed and to do that that's a long waiting game because you are going to have to use your pirate scrolls very very carefully you will not be able to max out all of these units instantly like that so this is one that you will be waiting to activate later on down the line in the coming months of pirate rumble this one following up the free spirit crit team is a lot easier to level up because there are multiple different colors here you've got for example i forgot to mention this early actually you've got a strength and in unit in koala so both strength pirate scrolls and imp pirate scrolls will actually give the bonus exp to these dual units but but as I said earlier, they do not count as any kind of color. So therefore, there is no color advantage. You cannot use a color boost on them. So you have to use them with class boost. And here we go. Sabo and Koala will be boosting Cerebral and Free Spirit units. But this team specifically is for Free Spirit crit teams. I did touch on it earlier that Luffy Zora is not really a team 
useful for dealing a lot of special damage, but more so hitting critical strikes on normal attacks to have a lot of damage like that. It's a very, very glass cannon, glass cannon, glass cannon team, but I do recommend this is a good team to put on defense as well, because a lot of people will be using slow burn, slow activating specials that do a lot of damage. But what happens when you have a bunch of normal attacks coming at you, blitzing you down and knocking out your unit. So this is something that will take your enemies by surprise. We have also got here Rare Recruit, Bello Betty, Pirate Rumble, Otam. We have Luffy, Zoro, and we also have Marco and Ace, the Kizuna unit. You can replace Otama there with the Super Evolved Corazon. You can also replace either Luffy, Zoro or the Sabo and Koala with the Super Evolved Boa Hancock. They are very, very similar in what they do. They basically give critical chance and also increase the team's attack based on how many critical times or critical strikes they are able to land as well. Next up, we've got a hybrid between shooters and slashes here. Kizaru Super Evolved 6 plus Kizaru, you are going to see here, is a regular feature. If you look very quickly at a glance, you'll see him three times on this list. He is a super, super, super unit to invest into. I highly recommend investing all your yellow slash Sai slash golden scrolls into this Kizaru immediately because he is a top, top, top tier unit for both slashers and also shooters. So this one is a mix of tankiness. Shanks crew gives you a tanky start with defense up and you also have HP up coming through from the Frankie. Both Shanks crew and Frankie are HP cutting tanks. So they will give you tankiness to your team and then you have a lot of damage coming through, a lot of fixed damage coming through from Kuzan, Aokiji, aka Aokiji and also the carrot there, which can be replaced by the Anel for more fixed damage or you can also replace it with the other version or variation of Kuzan there, the other legend there. And Kizaru there, the reason why he comes up so often is because he gives speed, which is a very important stat to both shooters and slashers. He has a very short cooldown, very, very short cooldown, and he is able to hit a lot of enemies. And on top of that, he also gives special charge time increase level or AK cooldown reduction to all your units. So very, very, very powerful unit. Next up, we have got the Strikers. Now, the Strikers are led by Whitebeard. Let me tell you, this Whitebeard, very, very strong. You can essentially put him on any team because he boosts all units. So he's a rainbow unit, but his HP cut cannot be avoided. It deals 48% at max level to all enemies and it cannot be avoided no matter what and it's a short cooldown he's very very good and when he's at low hp on the 30 percent hp he becomes incredibly tanky giving himself level 8 defense up so i cannot recommend this white beard enough a very very powerful unit it's great to see all these older units that may not see as much usage in pve shining in pvp so this is a fantastic example of such unit the six plus white beard we've got treasure map viola and rebecca there we've got Tesoro. both of these two units will increase the cooldown or rather decrease cooldown but increase charge time level so you're gonna get you're gonna get cooldown reduction you're gonna have a very fast hp HP cut which is going to deal 48% of your enemy's HP and then two massive fixed damage AOE dealers here in the 6 plus Kuzan and you have also got the 6 plus V2 law there so that's a lot of fixed damage coming through for your strikers and although he's not a striker you have got 6 plus Akainu. 6 plus Akainu under 30 seconds when there's only 30 seconds remaining will deal over 6,000 fixed damage in a large range. He is a very very good at killing tanks so you do want to have him in your team as a sub or alternatively you can use him to replace either the Kuzan or also the Law there if you want. If you don't have any of those two units there as well, you got Pirate Rumble Nekomamashi, who is a great unit for Cerebral and Strike units, so he can slot in there over anybody on that team there. Next up, we have got the Slashers. So the Slashers gonna be relatively tanky because of just one unit to make this whole team tanky and you do see him featured above in that int team it's going to be the six plus super evolved doflamingo he'll give hp up and defense up two of the best statistics you have even on an offensive team for pvp for pirate rumble he's a very strong unit again i do recommend investing into this six plus doflamingo just like the six plus kizaru both of these units don't see too much play outside of pirate rumble in normal pv game mode right now but they are two top dogs two really really top dogs that i'm sure many of you guys already own 
that are totally worth investing your yellow slash Psy and your int slash purple scrolls into. And you can obviously see Kizaru there beside that super evolved Doflamingo alongside Shanks crew as well. We've got Mihawk there who's going to be a consistent HP cutter in a large range. The longer the battle goes, the more he's going to cut the enemy's HP. So that's very nice. And then you have Carrot as fixed damage who will be able to finish off a lot of enemies. Very, very nice. Inu Arashi, although he doesn't boost slash units, he is a slash unit that is a cerebral unit. And he will also boost his own attack up depending on his HP. Below 60%, he gives himself a significant attack buff. And he has a huge range of hitting enemies for a lot of damage. So Inu Arashi, very good on a strength team if you want to put him with the Kainu somewhere. The 6 plus Akainu directly above him. But he can slot in there over Mihawk or the Carrot as your damage dealer. You have a cool time or charge time reducer here in the form of Cracker who works for both Powerhouse and Slasher units, but I would say he best shines on a Slasher team. I would say Powerhouse units are not the way forward in PvP. They will become outdated, in my opinion, relatively fast. So, last but definitely not least, I actually think this is a very, very powerful team. It's going to be the Shooters. And hey-ho, guess what? We have another 6-plus Kizaru, Super Evolved Kizaru. So he works on so many different teams. You do want to evolve that Kizaru and invest into him immediately as soon as PvP opens. We have got 6-plus Ace. Another unit just like 6-plus Whitebeard who doesn't see much gameplay anymore. But in PvP, you will be seeing him a lot because he too just like Whitebeard, has an unavoidable significant amount of damage that will hit all enemies two times his attack. Very, very, very good booster for shooter units and also free spirit units, don't get me wrong, but I say he shines more on a shooter team. You got Frankie there appearing again. He's very good for boosting HP, giving your team more sustainability and tankiness. Kizaru, you know what he does already. Hits everyone or basically everyone. Gives a lot of speed, gives a lot of cooldown reduction and just in all overallness he's he's just great he's kizaru he's great then we have super evolve v to luchi he will reduce the defense of your enemies and then hit them meaning his attack will deal a lot of damage a lot of damage and then you have the new v3 akainu as i said earlier who will incinerate annihilate and eliminate any enemy healer that so causes you problems just like that they'll be gone you love to see it and the replacements for the i would say luchi and the akainu there are going to be the usopp super evolved and also again the kuzan who appears on here three times six plus kuzan is very very good for those of you who don't know what he does he will deal a large amount of fixed damage in a large range and have an 80 percent chance to bind all enemies by 5%. So very, very powerful unit. And that's it from me, guys. That is the cheat sheet. Hopefully, you guys are able to build some of these teams. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please do leave them all down in the, the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer as many questions as possible, as many comments as possible, even if they're just generic comments as well. I will be doing I will be doing my best to answer them. And lastly, I just want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to you guys watching the video, you guys supporting my channel to actually get me into this position, to give me this platform to be able to stand here or rather sit here and talk to you guys about One Piece Treasure Cruise. And a huge thank you to Bandai Namco Entertainment for giving me this opportunity to play on the test server, to get some sneak previews of other units, other game modes. And yeah, I have to say just a massive, massive thank you. I really do appreciate you guys. And I hope you have enjoyed the video. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, to hashtag Danka Bandai, Danka Yoshi with a Bellissimo, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye bye.